All right, so you had to do your research on looking up what census, systematic sample, and cluster samples were. And you were supposed to look at some um, examples along with the definitions of those three types of samples. So this is just a quick little review to make sure you understand the differences between those three types and others that we know about. So in a census, just a reminder that it is a study of every unit, everyone, or everything in a population. So you don't necessarily have to have a... Um, a census of every single person in the, the general United States population. That is called the U.S. Census that we run every 10 years, and um, it gathers a bunch of different information on people in the whole United States. You could instead do just a census on the state of Massachusetts and gather information about the residents of Massachusetts. Or maybe you're going to gather information about the cars of Massachusetts or the dogs of Massachusetts. Okay. You could even break it down further by saying that you have, you're going to take a census of a statistics class at a college, and here you might have 40 people that are in the class, and you're going to gather information on all 40 people that are in the class. If you gather information on everybody in the class, then that is considered a census of the course. Okay, you could also use it with um, objects, not just people, where you have an orchard and you need to gather information about every single one of those trees that's on that farm. So a census can be as broad as taking information from everybody from the uni whole United States, or you can go even further and you can simplify it by just taking the census of every person that's in a stats class, or, you know, you could have a <clears throat> a field of cows and take information on every single person, every single cow that's on the field. Okay, your next type of sampling you had to look up was systematic sampling. And systematic sampling here is easier to do than random sampling. In it, the elements are counted off. So that just means that every kth element is taken. So what you end up doing is you line everybody up in a particular order and you give them all, you assign them all a number. And usually your numbers are repetitive after a while. So maybe one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you might say every fourth person is going to be used. Okay. Or you might just have every person numbered as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on and you're going to say that you're going to use every fifth person. So you would use this person here, and this person here, and after these two people, you would use the next two. Or maybe instead, you want to um, use every um, third person. So you would instead pick your every third person, where you would have this gentleman, you would have this person here, and this one here in the blue shirt, and then another one in another lighter blue shirt. Okay, so the systematic could also be done with um, houses. You know, you take people's, the number of people's houses, and maybe you're going to use every odd house, or maybe you're going to use every third house in the, on the street. Okay, maybe instead you're thinking like on a conveyor belt at a factory where you're going to test taste every tenth piece of candy or every twelfth piece of candy to make sure that everything is working right with the machines. Okay, so it doesn't just have to be with people, it could be with objects, don't forget. Okay, so with a systematic sample you have some sort of system as to how you're choosing that person or people or items or houses or whatever it is that you're trying to choose. Cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is similar to what we ha learned about the other day, which was stratified random sampling. Okay, in cluster sampling, you are going to divide the population into groups. Now, most cases it's geographically located, but it doesn't always have to be located geographically. We call these groups clusters, or we call them blocks. Okay, the clusters are randomly selected, and each element in the selected clusters are used. So, for example, let's say we have the state of Massachusetts. I want to ask a certain question of the residents of the state of Massachusetts, but I know that I can't contact every single resident of Massachusetts. So I'm going to choose a couple, two or three of the counties of Massachusetts. So I'm going to create a list or I'm going to number my counties and I'm going to say I have Essex County is 01, Middlesex is 02, Worcester is 03, Franklin is 04, and so on. I'm then going to go to my random digits table and use that table to select which 
clusters I'm going to ask. So if my random digits table selected Middlesex County, we would choose Middlesex. Maybe it's going to also choose Plymouth because that number came up, and maybe then it's also going to choose Hamden. Okay, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to ask each resident in Middlesex County the question, and each resident in Plymouth County the question, and each resident in Hamden County the question. Okay, so when you're doing a cluster sample, there is a point that is a simple random sample where you're using that to choose your clusters. However, once you choose your clusters, you have to make sure you poll every single person or item in that simple cluster. Okay, you could use it in order to um, poll people at a Patriots game, where we go in, we go into our random digits table. We have all of our places labeled. And we're going to then pull out which sections we're going to go and pull. Maybe we're going to pull 111, we're going to pull 128, we're going to pull 237, and 333. It's easier to go and ask every single person in that section of 111, 128, 333, and 237 instead of just certain individuals. So when you go and you select a certain group or a cluster and then you ask every single individual in that group, that is when you have a cluster sample. So as another example, what I could do is if I had a question that I wanted to ask the math teachers that are on the second floor A pod, I could go and I could number each one. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. And I could say I have one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I would go to my random digits table and I would pull out the first three digits that are in there. So if I came up with Carpenito as my first digit, if I came up with Brigitte as my second, and McGinn as my third, I would then go ask those teachers' classes my question. And I would have to make sure I ask everyone in Brigitte's class, everyone in McGinn's class, and everyone in Carpenito's class the question to gather my data. Okay, once you, the difference that you need to make sure you know between a stratified random sample and a cluster sample is that when you have a stratified sample, you wouldn't necessarily have to ask every single person in Brigitte's class or every person in McGinn's class or every person in Carpenito's class. You could choose certain people from each class using the random digits table. In a cluster sample, you have to ask every single person in all three classes the question. Okay, so that was just a quick little summary recap of the three different types of cluster sampling, um, systematic sampling, and um, cluster sampling. Okay, so now if you need to refer back to this, please feel free to continue watching the video again.